Howdy gamers, and I love gaming. Sue me. Frick, should have seen that one coming. Now I have court tomorrow. Of course, I'm not gonna fall for the trick of hiring a lawyer. No one knows me better than me. Of course, I don't know anything about being one, but no need to worry because I have Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Okay, I might be screwed. I'm extremely sensitive to spoilers. I almost killed a man once because he told me that you can jump in Super Mario Bros. 2. You might think that means I try to play games right when they come out so I can avoid them getting spoiled, but no. Sifu seems really cool, but I also don't like spending money on new games, so I sort of just have to hope no one says anything about it. And that's just the thing. I don't even know if Sifu has stuff to be spoiled on. I literally don't even know what the plot is, and I'm fine with that. If I'm already sold on a game, I don't see a reason to learn more about it. Getting to experience everything spoiler free for the first time while I'm playing is a lot more enjoyable because it's a lot more new. Sure, that does lead to moments where I play something only to realize it's an entirely different genre than what I was expecting, but how was I supposed to know Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is a first person shooter and not a collectathon platformer? Anyways, because of all this, sometimes I'll play a game or watch something, not necessarily because I want to but more so because if I don't, I'm afraid I'll get it spoiled for me and so I can understand the references people are making. Sure, I could've just looked up why the funny bald guy was falling down, but I'd heard good things about Breaking Bad, so sure, why not? I'll watch all 62 hours just so I can understand the reference. That's basically how stuff works for me. If I see it talked about enough on the internet, I'll give it a try so that I don't see a reference that spoils it and also so I can be in on the joke. Recently, that got me to play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. For starters, people use the sound effects from the game in videos all the time. It's to the point that when playing the game, they felt out of place because they've basically taken on a life of their own. Additionally, every Christmas Eve, I'll see people making the same almost Christmas means it isn't Christmas joke, uh, along with the occasional mention of a parrot for good measure. Finally, there's the whole site where you can make your own Ace Attorney court cases. So when you consider how story focused something like Phoenix Wright is, I'm sure you can see why I'd want to play it before I got it ruined for me. Plus, I've been wanting to play more DS games, so it sort of just works. Although, to be honest, I didn't play it there. I used my Switch thanks to the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy, and I'm glad I did. Not only does it have improved audio, but the game is now in widescreen and everything was redrawn compared to the pixelated graphics of the originals. It all just looks great, except for when it zooms out and gives us a wide view of the courthouse. It just looks worse than the rest of the game, but it never bothered me too much. Just more of a nitpick and something I can keep in mind to use as a great conversation starter. I think the reason it stands out is just because of how polished the rest of the game is. I mentioned the sound effects earlier, but there's a reason they've become so iconic. Because they're freaking amazing. In a lot of games, I don't really think about the sound effects. I'm not gonna go out of my way to praise the way picking up a coin sounds in Mario. While it would be weird if it wasn't there and makes the action of getting them more satisfying, I'm not gonna make my high school yearbook quote about it. Conversely, the sound effects in Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney add a lot to the game. Well, at least the ones during court cases. You'll realize the contradiction in someone's statement, present the evidence, and then you'll get to your Phoenix Wright yelled objection, which is just so satisfying because it emphasizes your actions as a player and his voice even reflects how you feel. The same thing is done with the desk slams and there are some other sound effects used similarly, but I couldn't tell you what the name of them are. They really do help to make court cases more intense and part of that is thanks to how they're used in conjunction with the music. Oh my god is the music in this game so good. It's adaptive music, meaning it changes in response to what's going on in the game. Outside of the Wii Wheel, it's probably the best thing to happen to video games. And a lot of them though, it can be difficult to do since you have no idea how fast the player will go through a level or just how they'll act in general. But because of the way Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney works, it's able to be perfectly scored to your actions as a player. Perhaps my favorite way this is done, like I said, is in conjunction with the sound effects. More specifically, when objecting to something. You do this by presenting evidence you think contradicts the witness statements. When you get it wrong, the music will just keep on playing like normal, letting you know you messed up before the game even tells you, and without some annoying sound effect playing. But when you get it right, the music will cut off, 
Phoenix Wright will point out the contradiction and then the music will come back but with a new track that matches the increased intensity of what's happening. It really makes it so much more satisfying and the music is used amazingly elsewhere. It also changes in the middle of conversations matching what's currently going on making things so much more intense. It also helps that the songs are just good. They never distract from reading dialogue boxes but still manage to add to the game. Another thing that really adds to the court cases are the characters themselves. A lot of games will just have a static PNG of a person while they're talking, and while that's cool for when I have some tape on hand and want to replace who I'm speaking to, it can also feel lifeless. Here though, they're constantly moving around, whether it's their mouths moving while the text scrolls, an idle animation, or in reaction to something that was just said. It doesn't matter how minor of a character they are, it all still applies and makes everyone feel extremely lively in the game extremely polished. But you're probably wondering by now about the actual gameplay, and this is where I reveal to you that Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is actually a visual novel, so there is none. That's a joke by the way, I like to have a little bit of fun around here. I honestly don't love the term visual novel because it makes the game sound like a book that just so happens to be on the same system as Hentai Uni, a real video game. Despite being extremely text heavy with no voice acting, Phoenix Wright has gameplay to it. It's not like you're just clicking through dialogue boxes, which I feel like is the impression most people get when they hear the term. It's split into two different sections that have some overlapping mechanics, investigations and trials. The investigation portion takes place in between the trials themselves and you'll be moving around finding evidence and clues as to who did the crime. This is done point and click style where you'll click on different objects and people. It's nothing major, but I appreciate how instead of a generic cursor, here it's a magnifying glass since, you know, you're investigating. Even better is how the cursor will light up to highlight what can be interacted with and even show if you've already clicked on an object before. Of course not everything on a screen will be pertinent to the case, but it makes the world feel more lived in and the dialogue in relation to the object is never something generic. Each one has its own line to go along with it, making me want to click on everything. Not just because I'm worried I'll miss something important, but because it's always something at least somewhat interesting. More importantly is when you click on a person, you're given the choice of talking to them or presenting an item. Talking to someone is often how you progress in these segments and you'll learn vital information about the case. Also each episode you'll get to talk to new people and they all have such distinct and memorable personalities that even someone like Lotta Hart who despite being a minor character in the second longest episode is still someone I could describe. That's all thanks to the writing of this game, which is amazing, in and out of the courtroom. The dialogue all feels natural, not to mention there are some genuinely funny moments, not just from the conversations, but also because of how over the top the game can be at times while playing it completely straight, which I love. One issue I have with talking to people in the investigation portion though, and sometimes in the courtroom, is that there is no text log. It would have been nice if there was an option to pull one up to look at recently spoken dialogue considering not only is this a text heavy game, but one where what people are saying matters. Technically, for some parts if you missed a line you can just talk to the person a second time, but that's obviously pretty tedious, especially if they have a lot to say, and there are times where that's not even an option. Anyways, I said there are two choices when you click on someone, so I guess next we can talk about presenting an item. It's not really too crazy, you just show someone a piece of evidence you found and they'll talk about it. Sometimes they won't have anything to say and will just give a generic, I don't know what that is, but other times it can lead to an entirely new talking option. The latter always feels good, almost like a mini puzzle in a sense. There is also no point where I felt like I had to just show a bunch of random stuff to someone to see what worked. There was always logic pointing to what I should be doing in that regard. Admittedly, that's not always the case in these investigation segments. Sometimes it's not always obvious as to what you should do next. There were times where it's just moving around to random places I'd already investigated in hopes that something new might have happened that the game didn't clue me in on in any way. Like in episode 3, you're supposed to rip open the grate, leave, and then come back where you'll find a kid there. There wasn't any reason to come back to the employee area, it's just what you're supposed to do. That's rarely an issue though, it's almost always obvious enough what you should be doing and there's even this pop up on the bottom screen letting you know if something has changed in regards to the screen you're on. Also in case you're wondering how you move in these sections, you just select the move button on the bottom and choose where you want to go. It's disappointing that you don't get to move around the world itself, 
This definitely doesn't help to make it feel more real, but it does make sense. Just selecting where you want to go and appearing there is nice, and if these environments you're looking around were 3D, I imagine it would be a lot more tedious. Anyways, that's enough of the investigation portion of the game. There's not much more that can be said, so let's move on to the main part, the courtroom. Here, you'll be trying to prove your client innocent, along with finding out who actually did the crime, even though that's not your job. This is primarily done through cross-examining the witness, the main gameplay of these sections. They'll say some statements and you have to find which part of it contradicts something that's been previously said in the episode using your evidence. Jesus Christ I made it sound way more boring than intended, I promise it's a lot of fun. For starters, picking out contradictions in the statements themselves is so satisfying and a lot like a puzzle in a sense. Sometimes they can be pretty easy, but that's not an issue because when a line in their statement sticks out to you and you realize it isn't true without having to even look at the evidence, it makes you feel like a genius. Other times, when it's a lot more difficult, it's still just as rewarding because you'll be looking through all of your evidence only to find the exact piece you need to put two and two together. There are some other things that make this even better though, like how you can easily move back and forth through their statements and when you use a piece of evidence, it doesn't just disappear. Some are used multiple times between investigation and trial. Not only does it make it feel a lot less gamey to have pieces of evidence you don't need vanish, but it also helps with the puzzle aspect. Without it, it would be far too easy to see what you need just through the process of elimination instead of actually thinking about it, therefore ruining the satisfaction of the amazing puzzles. This means, unlike some games, you can't just stumble into the solution, ruining the fun. Truth be told though, not all of the puzzles are amazing. Admittedly, a few times the evidence you have to present in order to get a contradiction feels like a bit of a stretch, which is always frustrating. Not just because the puzzle itself was bad, but there's also a life bar during the trial. If you try to point out a contradiction that's just not there, you'll lose some health and then when you run out, you have to reload from your last save. But when what you need to do is a bit of a stretch, it's easy to blow through most of your health. Overall, it is a good thing though, because as ever mentioned, pretty much all the puzzles are amazing, making moments like that few and far between. Anyways, the other part of the contradictions that makes them so good is the implications that they have on the story side of things. Whenever you catch someone in a lie, they'll change part of or their whole testimony to reveal new bits of information that feed into the story as a whole. Sometimes it can be a major twist that you didn't even see coming, but makes sense in retrospect, while other times, not that, to make those moments feel even more special. To be fair though, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney's story is full of twists, however to me they never got old no matter how many times the story did them. The tale that each episode tells is just so freaking good, and the drift feed of information that lets you solve the mystery at hand at the same time as Phoenix Wright is perfect, making them never feel cheap. Also, there are usually multiple mysteries per episode that combine together to reveal the full picture of what happened. This is what helps to keep the pacing of them so good and intense. Some of them are long too, but I still played through each case in one sitting because of how gripping they all were. Except for episode 5, because you could beat Snoopy Silly Sports Spectacular 22 times and it would still be shorter. Granted, Snoopy Silly Sports Spectacular is pretty short, coming in at only 20 minutes, but 7 hours and 30 minutes is still decently long for just one episode. Fortunately, it's not as if the game really wants you to beat it all in one sitting. In fact, not only is the game broken up into multiple parts through days, but sometimes a court case will have a break in the middle of it. Plus, those aren't even necessary because you can save at any time. It would be nice though if when you came back from a break, the game had a Professor Lane style summary of everything that happened just to jog your memory. Also, if you're just absolutely begging right now for me to critique the story of this game, don't worry, I've got a complaint that people will probably think I'm stupid for. So you know how in video games there's usually a plot? Really cool idea, shout out to the Epic of Gilgamesh for coming up with that one. Phoenix Wright, on the other hand, unfortunately doesn't have the best plot, in fact it barely has one at all. I know I just praised the game's story, and I meant everything I said, but that's just within episodes. As for an actual coherent story between them, the game is sort of lacking which is really disappointing. It's not as if the episodes aren't connected, they are, but they take place months apart from one another, except for the first two cases, but even then, those are still a month apart. If you don't believe me, just look at the plot summary on Wikipedia. Actually, on second thought, don't do that because there are probably definitely spoilers, but 
you can take my word that it's just summarizing each of the court cases individually, and even the Phoenix Wright fan wiki does this. Whereas a normal game with a continuous plotline like Hotel Dusk Room 2 on 5, even though it's broken up into different chapters, summarizes everything normally. I would have preferred something like that for Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. A continuous narrative helps the world to come alive in ways that segmented episodes just can't. That's not to say the game made no effort to make the cases come alive through segmented episodes though. Sometimes they'll reference past cases, there's a very slight overarching mystery of how Phoenix Wright came to be a defense attorney, and there is character development for Edgeworth, Maya, and Phoenix. All of that leads to what for me was a genuinely heartfelt ending that I loved so much, but I still couldn't help but feel could have been strengthened by a real overarching plot. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is without a doubt not only one of my favorite DS games of all time, but one of my favorite games of all time. There's so much it does well, and not that much it messes up on. That's why to give this game a score of 100, I'd give it a 95 out of 100. And for an award, I would give it the Best Lawyer Game Award. Although I don't think it did a good job at preparing me for court. I still have to go tomorrow, but I think I may have found a loophole. You see, they can't charge me for anything if I don't show up, right? I mean, it's flawless. Anyways, remember to stay safe and that I love you guys.